This is Alabama Politics with Steve Flowers, an in-depth interview with Alabama's top political newsmakers. Now, from the studios of Troy University, here is Steve Flowers. I'm Steve Flowers, and welcome to Alabama Politics. Folks, we're very fortunate tonight to have as our guest the newest state senator from the Wiregrass, Senator Josh Conley from Coffee County. Uh, senator Conley is probably going to, hopefully, we'll ask him to be a guest in subsequent years from now, but he is in my circle of friends around the, wire, the, the metropolitan area of Montgomery and the Wiregrass. As you know, this viewing audience is primarily the river region, the Wiregrass, so I'm going to have, I like to have Senator Conley in my group. I have Clyde Chambliss on every year, I have Will Barfoot on every year, and I have Kirk Hatcher on every year. So I'm going to have you on if you'll come on every year. I'd be glad to. Because I've got a pretty big viewing audience in Montgomery and Troy especially. Folks, Conley is y'all's Troy State Senator. He is Troy State Senator. Jimmy Holly was a state senator for 30 years or so, and my good friend and colleague in the House, and great state senator. But Senator Conley is, is jumping off, doing a good job. He started off good. He knows how to get things done. He's a good businessman, a good farmer, and lives in a small area called Ina. I know. I know. I know. And uh, in Coffee County, I'm gonna let him tell y'all about it. His district. You tell him how well, and what encompasses your district. It ain't just Pike County. It's Coffee's the biggest county. That's right by population. Yeah. It is, so. So I go ahead. You yeah. Letting me be on with you today. Well, I've thank you. Enjoyed getting to know you. And Sorry, I talked too much about you. No. But well, hey, somebody's yeah. gonna have to because I won't. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, thankful to be able to follow in Senator Holly's place and serve in Coffee County, Covington County, Pike, and then I call it the northern half of Dale County, but it's pretty much from the north part of Ozark all the way to the uh, north part of uh, Dale County. Which do you go into Ozark? No, just on the very northern edge, like the Country yeah. Club of Ozark, exactly. kind of north. I use 27 and Broad Street as a reference point. Anything north yeah. of that is in District 31, and anything south is in Donnie Chastain's Senate District. I talked to Steve Klaus this morning. Yeah. Josh, I may have told you this. Steve Klaus and I go back since we were boys. Really? As friends. His mama, Miss Ruth Price Klaus, was born in Pike County, up around the airport in that area of the county. And... Uh, and she, my mama and she were high school cheerleaders together and best friends. Then Miss Ruth married St Mr. Jimmy Klaus from Ozark. And uh, when we were little boys, Steve Klaus would come down, to come to Troy and play with me. I'd play with him as little boys. <laughs> and then we grow up and we go both go to uh, Alabama to school in the same fraternity. Now, he's quick to tell you that I'm five years older than him. Yeah. I mean, when I tell people I grew up, never have not known Steve Klaus. But I was talking to him this morning about some about budget stuff. I was trying to figure out some things about the budget because he knows it. But then he followed, He came to the house. The point I'm trying to make is I, my district, Pike, wasn't ever big enough for a house district by itself. My first term, I went over and got part of Barber. But the rest of the time, I got that northern part of Dale that you have. And we were drawing the lines one time. Steve didn't know this, and I didn't either. I didn't want to go into Ozark. <laughs> and and it, we cut it off right there at uh, Ayrton and Skipperville and Arguda and Rocky Head. And um, I said, Steve, don't put me in Ozark. Now, that's your people. I mean, don't, I, I got enough people to not go in Ozark. We're drawing lines. And the, the person drawing lines mistakenly put Country Club Drive in my district. And his mom and dad lived in my district. <laughs> so Jimmy and Ruth lived in, in Country Club Drive. And I hated to do that. I said, I didn't do it, Mr. Jimmy. But I didn't mean to get off on that no, subject. You're good. But that, that's a good have, area, those northern Dale County people. Yeah, no, and it is. And I, I, I told people, I said, one of the unique things about the campaign is you get out and you meet a lot of folks. And, you know, those folks in that part of the world are the same as the folks that I know, you know, just good people and hardworking. And so it's people I could relate to and enjoy representing in Montgomery. Josh, uh, you're not but 43 years old. Just turned 44. So. Did, now, did you, uh, wh how long did you serve on the Coffee County Commission? So, in 2012, I was elected, and I was halfway through my third term whenever I got elected to the Senate. So, I was in there for 10 years. 
What um, all areas you get? You get all the rural areas. You come in enterprise and all. You got it. You get Elba on the county. County commission. So I had uh, Elba um, and the eight. Let's see, the western edge of Enterprise was in my district on the Coffee County. So you got in Enterprise a little bit. I did, yes, sir. Uh huh. Now let me ask you this: When you ran um, for uh, the 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 thing, the the Senate, how long in advance did you plan on running? How long did Holly tell you in advance he wasn't going to run? So I talked to him in 2010 about- You were already on the county commission. No, sir, I wasn't. And I was I was not in politics. I just owned a business and uh, was very interested in getting involved. And I went to him, sat down in the elbow in a little closet there at their business there in the old high school or the old elementary school. And we were sitting there talking That's about it. That's his son's pharmaceutical. That's thing, right, huh? John. Uh -huh. And we were sitting there talking and I told him, I said, look, I want to do what you do. And he laughed at me and he says, well, you really should think about all this before you jump into it. And he, he advised me, he said, you need to get involved in somebody's campaign. And uh, so I did, I got involved with Bradley Byrne when he was running for governor and did some events for him in Coffee County. And then in 2012, Robert Stevens, who had been a commissioner since the county was founded, not really, but you know, <laughs> he, he was, I think he was 90 years old and when he fin finished up his term but uh, announced that he was not going to seek re-election. I said, well, this is a good opportunity to get involved in local politics. And so I did and was successful. Uh, ran against a guy that I go to church with. I said, that was the hardest campaign I've ever had to For your first county commission? Yeah, and so the guy uh, was in my dad's Sunday school class. And, uh, you know, I always would laugh when I'd meet people. And they're like, well, why well, should you I Well, you were about 30 years old, were you? Right, uh -huh. I think it was 31 uh -huh. or 32. So. Uh, yeah, and um, you know, won that and was able to serve and really kind of opened my eyes to government because I think a lot of people have this misconception it's just people go in there and they get clouded judgment and they do crazy things. But you know, you really have to work with people. It's uh -huh. a relationship business and not everybody, you know, that you serve with believes like you and uh, not that you sacrifice your principles and your morals, but you know, when it comes to business issues, you have to learn to work together and give and take. So. Um, you know, it was a good it was a good starting out place for me because I think I was probably like most naive to how the process works. Talk about the county commission, the state. That's there. right, in the county uh -huh. commission, and you really get to experience on the local level how to deal with people because. Uh -huh. I, I laugh. I, I, I tell folks when my phone rang, people weren't calling to congratulate me on being a good county commissioner. They were using calling to complain about something. So <laughs> yeah, no. uh, I got used to dealing with the public and, and kind of their expectations and how they view government and uh, kind of brought me back to the ground a little bit. You know what I loved about you when I first read about you and saw you and everything was your roots. I love the fact that somebody has such deep roots in Coffee County or the whole district. How far back do the colonies go? You had an ancestor that probably settled in that Pea River where you still live. The colonies have been there in that area of Coffee County for at least 100 years, isn't it? Probably oh, 150. Yeah. Probably before, 150. They... Before Alabama was a state, wasn't it? Yes, sir. When did they settle in there? He... I think it was back in the mid 1800s, you know. Before was, the Civil War. Right, uh -huh. and uh, they, we had family in Elba and then family down in Ina. They were both Carney, the Carnies in Elba and? That's right. In, uh, in Ina. That's right, so uh -huh. probate judge, uh, Fleetwood Carney. He is uh, my great grandfather's brother. Okay, now you know, Miss Sarah Carney was Big Jim's first wife. Right. That died in childbirth. Now she was Fleetwood's grandmama or mama? Mama, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So Sarah Connolly was married to Big Jim, was because Big Jim thought a lot of Fleetwood Connolly. Mm -hmm. He actually put him in his cabinet for a little while. I believe that's right. And uh, you know, I think he was maybe not finance director, but he was some big job in the in Big Jim's cabinet. And then he went back. But now let me ask you this: See, Sarah Connolly's daddy was probate judge. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? I didn't. Yeah, Sarah Connor's <laughs> dead. So Fleetwood followed it. See, if Fleetwood was your was Sarah's sister, uh, sibling, then that means his daddy was probate judge. Okay. See, Sarah Connor, the history books say Big Jim Folsom enhanced his political career by marrying Sarah Connor, who was a daughter of the probate judge, and your great her daddy was well thought of throughout the state. 
Really? Oh, yeah. You didn't know that? You know more about it than Well, I your know. granddaddy, <laughs> would have been your great-great-granddaddy, was one of the most prominent probate judges. As you know, in that era, that was the most prominent job in the state. Being a probate judge of a county okay. was like being king of a county. <laughs> no, you own the fee system. Okay. I mean, you own the fee system. Plus, when someone ran for governor, the first stop they made was a probate judge. Because wow. they controlled a lot of votes. So, what Fleetwood was, was his daddy was probate judge. Okay. From, right from your area. So, should have campaigned on that, shouldn't I? Well, I mean, he was thought of throughout the state. According to books you read, there's some guy who's written one really on the Big Jim Prodigy, and he talks about if you read Big Jim's history, uh, he, he, that, was, that was Big Jim's calling card when he first ran, uh, although the Folsom's had been in Coffee County a long time. Yeah. Too. And you know, his house is Between in, Troy and, yeah. But they moved it to Elba. Uh huh. So the old house is in downtown Elba there. They yeah. moved it back there close to where the old jail used to be, right, the levees right behind it. But I love the fact that you, right there in your area with all those cars that have been out. Now, what kind of farmer do y'all do? And, and what did you, grow, did you grow up thinking you were going to be a farmer? I did. That? I did. I, I laughed. When was I, your daddy a farmer? He is a farmer, still farms uh -huh. today. And my grandfather was. He was actually a farmer and a pastor. Um, you go to that the church you go to? I do. I is it a Baptist, Baptist church down there? Uh -huh. I know Baptist church. Uh -huh. They say the reason it started back in the early 1900s was because uh, they thought that there was a bunch of rebels down there and uh, <laughs> they felt like they needed the church so they went down there and started a church and that's kind of where we ended up down there. But uh, I asked you the question, do y'all do multiple things on your farm? We do. Cotton, peanuts, corn, soybeans, beef, cattle, and then we have poultry houses, broiler Poultry. Say those again. Now you do all those cotton, peanuts, cotton. corn, and soybeans, and then we have beef cattle. But now that's some good soil around that river, isn't it? It is. It's now, so place. you don't you what do you, what what grow, you use cotton cotton around the river, down around the bottom well, land. Well, we irrigate a lot, and uh, you can irrigate in those river bottoms because the land's flat, so you can have pivots and it's easy to access water. But uh, peanuts is our main crop. But it doesn't have to be near the river, does it? It doesn't. But uh -huh. we, you know, really got into cotton because of rotation. Yeah. Because uh, uh -huh. you plant peanuts after peanuts and yeah. start getting disease and nematodes. And so we kind cotton, of a diversity. Cotton, peanuts, of soybeans. Corn. And then your cattle. Mm -hmm. Cattle. Beef cattle have about 600 head of beef Are cattle. Are you real active in alpha? <laughs> no, not really, and I think a lot of that's just because my family's always been down there and haven't, they've, they've not been uh -huh. real involved, but, you know, being in Montgomery, you know, I start to see their influence uh -huh. and, and what they do, and so I've been proud to kind of partner with them and learn more about their organization. Well, you're a natural for them. I mean, you, I bet you they ain't had, they don't have many that are farmers and insurance people. That's their two things, that's you know? Right. yeah. So, uh when I was in the legislature, they adopted me because I, I, I was in the insurance business, property and casualty, yeah. and they knew that, and um, and they, um, th not many people were independent insurance. They, they knew the nomenclature of insurance. Yeah. You actually started, didn't you work with my business partner? So, yeah, Denny, Denny and, and Bill Sam. But now, I really was with Troy Insurance Agency on the square. We were a bank agency mm -hmm. that Mr. Bill Chapman and Corley Chapman owned. And then... Um, uh, they had to move it out of the bank when the law was changed. And then Mr. Bill Sanford was, I guess he's still living. He he bought the Troy. Uh, no, okay, I'm sorry. But anyway, Denny he Denny and I were Denny was in the same attorney I was That's in. That's right. He and Steve Klaus uh -huh. were pledged brothers. That's together. right. And uh the um anyway the, the Bill Sanford was a real good bond man. And he bonded a lot of the contractors around this that part of the state. But um I sort of gravitated doing malpractice for mutual assurance after I got in the legislature. Gotcha. You know, I got just got out of the be, being the only legislator. Well, you'll find this the case in a rural area. You get a lot of constituent calls. Yeah. See, I was the only resident legislator in Pike County. They they thought I was the congressman, the city councilman, <laughs> the state senator. I got every call when dogs were barking, the garbage ain't been picked up. Cause see, I was born and raised there. My family had been in Troy for 100 years, like yours has in, yeah. in Ina or North Pike County. So I knew everybody, was kin to everybody. And see, uh, Troy didn't have a, I was the only resident legislator. I mean, at least you got Marquis and Marcus and all yeah. them. You know, they might call them. They probably know to call the city councilman. They yeah. just, 
thought well steve's in politics i'll call him give him a call lost I'm, social security shit has to call bill dickinson every week <laughs> i said bill i got these three social security because I, I got these three social security checks lost i was in church this past <laughs> sunday and a lady asked me how washington was going i said they i think, don't know I they think you're supposed to, that's what i'd get that all yeah, the time and, and i'd get like, it every yeah. week i'd walk down the street in troy and uh and somebody say steve why aren't you in washington yeah I laugh because I sometimes I'd be like, I wonder if I should really tell them that I'm not there. I wonder if they'd have voted for me if they'd have known I wasn't going to Washington. Well, you be a, you're a natural to gravitate. The alpha needs to be cultivating you because yeah. see you in both both their businesses. Yeah, well, you and Schofield are the only farmers, but Schofield does car uh, car dealership now mostly. Yeah, and I think he was in the poultry business, but he got out of it, and then he uh -huh. builds houses now. So. so you and Schofield are the only true farmers in the Senate. No, well, the David, guy from Doe, David Sessions from Mobile. David Sessions, he's yeah. from down in Mobile. That's here right. He he's full-time. Yeah, and then uh -huh. um, Jack Williams from down in Mobile That's County. Right. He, he used to have some uh, some nurseries, and uh, but he's still got a bunch of land with pine timber on it, So, uh -huh. but he doesn't row crops. Speaking of that, what communities did they put you on? So I'm Ag and Industries. Makes sense. Banking and Insurance. Makes sense. Governmental Affairs, local. They divided that committee. That Senator Holly was over that one That's for a right. long time, and it was one big committee. Then they divided it because of its scope of work into local and state. Mm -hmm. And so I'm on the local because I came from the county commission. Judiciary, which is a very busy one. Um, Veterans and Military Affairs, which, you know, being there in Fort Rucker, that's a good one. Yeah. And um, Fred, Fiscal Responsibility and Economic Development. You know, talking about judiciary made me think, you know who my, who I, you know, I'm Ken DeBarfoot. Oh, boy. You better be careful. He's chairman of judiciary. He, yeah. We kid about that. Way, way off. See, my mama's people are from North Pike County around China Grove. And it's right, China Grove is right on the Montgomery and yeah. Bullock County line. Well, Barfoot was born and raised around Pike Road. And if you look at a map, they just that far apart. <laughs> well, transportation back in that era, you look at your ancestral tree, I guarantee you, you might have married your cousins, but you, some, your ancestors married their next door neighbors. Yeah. Because they, there was no way to go. You couldn't drive to Birmingham to date somebody. You had to date somebody in your neighbors. So I, bar, I saw that Barfoot name in my mama's family tree. And Barfield is saying too, he had a had a had a had an uncle named Joel who was on the county commission here in Montgomery. And the first time I met Joel, I says, he says, Fly was we can each other. I said, I figured we were because I've seen that Barfoot. But anyway, tell Joel tell Barfoot when you go back. I will. We got, you on the show. We got we got committee tomorrow morning at eight thirty. So. See, I was on old Flower show. I will. And I gave him a hard time. Uh, but I want you to join the trio. I have I don't have y'all on together, but I have you and Shamless. Because he's in this area, mm -hmm. and Hatcher and uh, and Barfoot's on every year. Yeah, y'all can tell the people what's going on and yeah. how y'all what y'all working on. I'll be glad to for, for your district and everything. Yeah, um, the uh, but you 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 know you've grabbed you become good friends with the freshman from Auburn, Hobie, hadn't you? That's right. Y'all be sea mates, a yeah. sweet mates. Yeah, we are. We we share a sweet, but you know a lot of commonalities between us. Our, our campaigns were very similar. We were going against folks that oh, yeah, we, we weren't supposed incumbent. to be. You know, yeah, he, he's running against the incumbent. Yeah. And, who uh, had a lot of money, too. That's right. He outspent him a good bid, and he won uh -huh. by one vote. So Now, did you, did, well, you weren't able to match Jones dollar for dollar, were you? No, we were probably less than half of what he had. Is that much difference? That's right. Yeah, I think. That was a big victory. It was. I mean, you know, we worked hard, though. Uh, I think that's, yeah, I, I tell folks, it's a it's a big district when you look at it, you know, from travel, you know, from Coveney County all the way over to Dale County. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, I, I think those people still really, it, it's, it's, it's bigger than county commission by far, but it's definitely still local politics. People want to see you at the coffee shop. Yeah. They want to see you at we did a lot of door to door, and we had a lot of good folks helping us. But uh, you know, we were we were thankful with the outcome. But I, I believe a lot of it's just hard work that we put into it. So I tell people like Jabo, who's been in the Senate for almost 50 years now, he's one of my best friends. And um, I said, Jabo, there's a lot of difference in being a senator from Vestavia. We just go home, and you know, they don't know who your senator is up there. But somebody like Carney, they got to go to coffee clubs in Andalusia, yeah. Red Level, Enterprise, Troy. 
I mean, and you got to drive 50 miles to do it. Yeah. And they want you to come. Oh, yeah. Because it's a rural, people, there's a lot of difference in representing a rural district than is. representing an urban district. Yeah. Those guys in Birmingham just go home. They don't have to go anywhere. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they go to some things, but I yeah. mean. No, it's it's definitely, and it's such a variety of things you go to. You know, you got a lot of military influence around that uh, enterprise, and then you get over into Covington County, and uh, of course my wife's from Covington County, so it's always good to get over there. My business partner, and we've got an office in Troy, so it's always good to get up there and meet folks, and that's probably one of the best things I've enjoyed is being able to go. You go to the Banks Buy Right and sit down and drink <laughs> coffee and learn about things there. Just they like, like you up there, don't they? Yeah, it's fun. You know, I always have enjoyed uh, seeing those spots. And you mentioned Arguda earlier. I'd never heard of that place, and then I was out campaigning, and you you go through there. You got a nice church there. So it's, uh, you know, when I'm talking about that area, I don't know if you'll do this now. You have time to as a state senator having five counties, but. I only had the one and a half, and I'd go to that Ayrton Skipperville ball game. Oh, you talking about a rivalry, Josh? <laughs> that is one heck of a rivalry. Yeah, I went. I went to their high school game one year, and Alabama and Auburn don't have as much intense rivalry as that. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about those kids hit each other so hard. I thought, my God, this. It was like their life was on the line. Yeah, this uh, superintendent Ben Baker. He called me. He's like, now we got the. This was in the spring. I think it was either the softball or baseball, and it was determining who got to go on into the uh, to the championship. And he called me. He says, "You might want to come to that one." I said, "I don't know what color to wear, what side to that stand the, on." That was the problem. And let me tell you something. Ayrton was the worst one. It was like they have feuds among families there, and I would I would go sit down just to, just to be a fan, you know, just to let them know I was there. My phone would be ringing as soon as I got back home from Troy. I'd have 15 phones. Why did you sit by that SOB <laughs> that names it? It was like the Hatfields and McCoys. And I yeah. think, well, I didn't know y'all had a feud. I just was sitting down. So h henceforth, I'd have to stand up the whole game and stand by Dr. Zoomstein. Uh -huh. There was a famous doctor in, in Ayrton everybody went to named Dr. Bob Zoomstein. He was a football coach. Uh, so I couldn't sit down at that ball game because they would think you, the, what yeah, you were saying. You were pulling for the other side. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> or I you know. were sitting by the enemy. They had, had, we had feuds going on. I know. I try to be an equal opportunity fan, you know, go to everyone <laughs> I can and be where I can. And, you know, it's it, there's a lot, but it's it's fun. I've enjoyed it. You know, I, as you know, I wrote a column about Enterprise and the growth that Enterprise is having. People don't realize what a hot spot enterprise is now. It, it is. I mean, it's, it, you know, there's a lot of things that are going on there. I mean, you know, Fort Rucker's been a big contributor to that, but they, the town's done a good job of, you know, marketing itself and bringing in uh -huh. some industry. Of course, a lot of it, uh, you know, surrounds Fort Rucker and defense contract type work, but, uh, you know, it, it's a good place. I mean, it's, you know, still local, just like, you know, all these other towns around in the district are. Um, you know, it's it's definitely a, a good place to call home. Josh, you said your wife is from Covington County, Andalusia? She's from Op, Alabama. Op. Mm -hmm. yeah, her family That's why you and Chuck are good friends. That's right. So, My fraternity brother, Chuck Burgess. That's right. So He, he called me about you, remember yeah. that? He, uh, it was late in the campaign. I never had met you yet. Yeah, he, he, he's a good friend of our fam or my wife's family and ours, you know, our family uh -huh. too. But they were dairymen, or they were a dairy family for years and years there in Op. And uh, I thought his daddy served was a the dentist too. Uh -huh. Now Chuck's family, uh -huh. he is. Uh -huh. uh, but you know, my oh, wife, your wife was in the farming business too. That's dairy right. Farmers. So she grew up on a dairy farm. How'd y'all meet? Oh, at church. Uh, Not in, down in the old, your area. She wasn't down there going to church, was she? Yeah, they they came to church that I know her and her family had started coming to church there. We both went to school at Auburn and well, graduated from, from there. How far is it from there? It's about 12 miles. Oh, you, I didn't, well, I didn't, they need to look at a map better. Yeah. So I was right there by it. Yeah. It, so we're right but, on the P River. <coughs> I did not realize that. Just south of, uh, <coughs> just south of Elba. And that, Chuck loves you. When you seen old Chuck lately? I uh, saw him a couple of weeks ago because his my kids go to school at Op and his grandkids go to school at Op and so they were at a. So track your children meet. go to Op then. They do. Yeah. They can cross over the line. There's no rule against it. You know, yeah. it's it's just always uh, been one of those things. Which you know, I went to school at Kinston. That's where I uh, you know was 
you know, started and finished that. But did you play basketball? Everybody played basketball. I again. did. That was really <laughs> one of the sports we we felt like we did well in. And Kansas uh, is known for that. They are. They are. Back then, that was the only sport you could play. And <laughs> Kansas would beat Lanier in Montgomery. Yeah. They were a one A school. Kansas was such a basketball powerhouse. <coughs> so when I was a young boy, man. Kenson would come here to Montgomery and be sitting in there in Lee High School. Yeah. That's how good they were. Yeah. Well, back then, you know, they played everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody played everybody. They played Enterprise, Andalusia. Kenson uh, probably beat Enterprise. They did back in the day yeah. whenever they New were. New Brockton was good, too. They were a tough school. Jimmy Baker went to New Brockton. Yeah. Uh -huh. now, so well, tell me about your children. I've only got about a minute left. How old are they? So I've got a 16-year-old daughter, a 13-year-old daughter, and a 11-year-old uh, son. Uh, uh -huh. A junior in high school, an eighth grader, and a fifth grader. What do they think about you getting in politics? <sighs> well, you'd already been in county commission. I had, uh -huh. but you know, up here it's different. Um, you know, I, I think it, life's still normal for them because my wife, she stays at home and makes sure that everything's going well. So we're blessed in that, and she's she's been a big help to me as well. Well, we're proud to have you in the legislature. Proud to have you representing Pike County and. As well as Coffee and Covington and Dale and and uh, I'm missing one. No, that's it. Okay, yeah, I'm thinking about the counties, uh, but uh, also got your campaign manager, the yeah, the, the brilliant David Myra, who's run everybody's campaigns and wins races. He's uh, he's the best. Uh, we've gotten to be good friends, and I appreciate that more than the others. So yeah. but we'll do this regularly, folks. Our guest tonight has been uh, your state senator. If you live in Troy. And all the wiregrass just about uh, Senator Josh Carney from the metropolitan area of Ino in near, near Pea River in Coffee County. Uh, it's, it's close to Elba, y'all. So just say he's from Elba or <laughs> Op. He's close enough to Elba or Op or whatever. We thank Senator Carney for being with us, and we thank you viewers for watching. Hope you tune in again next week for Alabama Politics. Thank y'all.